Hey guys, ECRG here, back with another video. Today we've got a very exciting glass door review for you, and it is the behemoth, the conglomerate, the leader of the CRO industry, IQVIA. They are number one in the CRO industry, and for good reason. They have been constantly adapting over the past few years, and they have been able to foresee the changes and where the industry is going with big data in the future. And I've been very impressed with their ability to, one, partner with IMS a few years before any other CRO has really thought about big data in a way. And they have recently merged with them in 2017 to develop a new brand called IQVIA. They were Quintiles IMS before, that's when they had originally merged together and then they rebranded to IQVIA. And even before Quintiles IMS, they were just Quintiles. And so we're gonna go ahead and jump into them before. I mean, we're gonna go ahead and jump into them right now to see uh, what they have to offer. I know a lot of you guys have been enjoying these reviews, uh, in particular because uh, I shed a little bit of extra light on what I see based on what I know from other friends in the industry and people that work there. So that's good. So this is IQVIA and this, I don't know if a lot of you guys know this, but this logo is actually supposed to be a hand here. Um, and IQVIA, that's how you pronounce it, I believe. Please correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that's the correct way to pronounce it uh, from what I've heard from people that have worked there. Um, but this, this name, really, a lot of people didn't like it that I've talked to, particularly because Quintiles was such a brand name and had worldwide recognition uh, in the CRO space, but I guess they really wanted to rebrand to something else because they are moving their business model in a different direction. And hopefully we'll get into that a little bit today when we discuss this. So this is the number one CRO. They're more than a CRO now, but we're still gonna call them a CRO in the industry right now based on revenue. As you can see, two to five billion dollars a year. Uh, I think the Mac, the second is Cineo's health based on size uh, and they do about two billion, maybe just under two billion since they combined with Inventive Health. But you see here the revenue is two to five billion for IQVIA. That's pretty good. Um, and the reason why it says founded here is because that's when the brand was together. Quintiles and IMS have been a lot, been businesses in their own right long before 2017. So don't really pay that much any mind. Uh, they have the headquarters in Durham, North Carolina. If you've ever been to Durham and driven on 40 or the Raleigh Durham um, on your way to Raleigh, you'll see the IQVIA building. It's big glass right there on the side of the highway. You can't miss it. So that's how a lot of people know about it. Uh, and it's a public company, 10,000 plus employees. They gotta have more than that. It's a huge company now. Um, they've just been acquiring and acquiring over the years. And um, so let's go ahead and get into it. So just some company updates. Let's see, this is what I really wanted to go to. You've got an overall 3.4 review, and that's really good. I think some of the other highest ones we've seen are 3.3, 3.2, but 3.4 is really good. And this is on 2.9 thousand reviews, which is also pretty good. And that's a lot. So that's pretty good. So we'll see what we find today. Um, I'll be able to add some more color commentary on top of that based on people I know. I know a, a number of people that have worked at IQVIA before when it was just quintiles. So within the past few years, I know people that work there currently, and uh, we'll be able to hopefully provide a little bit more insight there than just the reviews would say. So let's go ahead and get into it. Pros, good work-life balance, strong collaboration with colleagues. Many positions can work from home. And you know, this is interesting about the clinical research space in general. Most positions can work from home now. I mean, all we technically do is go into the office and fire up our computers. So pretty much all positions can work from home now. Uh, and I'm probably exaggerating on all, but many more can work from home. I know uh, when I was in the entry level position, project coordinator, project specialist role, 
I mean, I could have worked 100% from home easily. Um, and I've talked about that a lot on this channel as well. Um, so then here's a con that's interesting, a conflicting con. Work-life balance is not prioritized. So that's interesting. Um, in, in order for things to be here, look, it's got to be in a lot of reviews. So 206 reviews versus 331. Very high targets, no work-life balance. Wow. So that's that's two. I've said that. So let's go ahead and get into the reviews. Um, all right. And I'm going to try and look for reviews that are a little bit more juicy. Great company, anonymous employee. Coworkers are actually your friends, very supportive, great team spirit, great working environment, no micromanagement, work-life balance is awesome. Pay is on the low end, okay? Let's skip that, here's a little bit more juice. Con the contract allows employees to work with a top company with the hope of being hired by the partnering company. Okay, so this is how a lot of people get into IQVIA. See, I almost messed up there, IQVIA. Uh, they do a lot of contract to hire positions with a company called Aerotech. Aerotech is a company that they typically work with or they'll, they'll do work with Valesta or, you know, basically a recruiting company and they'll hire you on to be a CTA or study startup specialist or site ID. Um, and it's a good way to get into the field first and foremost, but they'll do, they'll do a six month to a year long contract with a option to be extended or hired on full time. So that's typically how they do things. Uh, so occasionally they'll have you apply and be able to be hired on full time, but a lot of the times they'll hire you in as a contractor, see how you work, and then they'll give you a full time gig later on. Um, so this person said, uncertain about the future after two year contract ends. There's a lot of corporate change and inaccuracies in policies and HR. So advice to management, better benefits to make up for the marginal pay. Please invest in better training education for your employees and not so much in online modulars. Um, so, okay, they, they like better training. So another thing to add about the marginal pay, I know a handful of people that make under 40,000 for CTA, their clinical trial assistant role. So that's what they mean. You'd like to see someone up above 40,000, maybe like 42, 43 just to make things a little bit easier. Um, but that's what I see typically. Uh, want to settle down in career? This is the one. I've been working at IQVIA full time less than a year. Flexibility, no manager force you to stay late in office unless you are completing work after reaching home. If you are good at something, your work will be recognized and applauded. Okay, let's continue. Of course, it's a big company. I worked at um, QVIA full-time for less than a year. Lots of things going on in the company, many opportunities, cons. At the time, the employee review process was broken and worked best for reasonable employees shining in low-performing groups. I've heard they are changing the process to not penalize good employees in high-performing groups. Okay. Um, let's see. Consultant. Good work-life balance in general. All right, that's good. Below average people, below par salary compensation. Lots of politics. Okay, it's a big company. We're going to see lots of politics. Not surprising there. And then below par salary compensation. We've seen that a couple times before. Uh, like we said, what they do is they bring you on in a contract. And since they know what you're being paid because you're on a contract, uh, they're only going to increase you marginally probably to be full-time after that so it's it's kind of a game that's how that's how they do things they bring you in and then then they'll extend you and kind of lead you along so they don't have to pay benefits and then at the last moment they'll either extend you big time or they will uh, hire you on full-time so that's why guys do not be afraid to show your mobility do not be afraid um you know, you are not in t you are not indebted to a place just because they gave you a contract or something like that. The industry is still pretty good. It's not very very consolidated right now, and in one day it's going to be consolidated. There's only going to be two major players, 
And the rest are going to be bought up and bought out potentially. So use your mobility while you have the chance. All right, let's see what else was that. People are treated with respect. They have a good idea of new contracts coming and try to put people on another contract if at all possible. You end up with a new manager every six months. In this industry, your manager can make or break you. So having a consistent manager isn't part of how the company runs. And he's exactly right. Or this person, it doesn't say if it's he, he or she, but your who your manager is can decide so much. Um, so that's why it's really important for you to grab your own career by the bar, by the balls, I would say, um, and really make sure that you can, you know, you're in charge of your career. You know what's best for you. So don't just rely on the manager and the higher ups to make decisions for you, for your career, and don't wait. You've got to be aggressive. You've got to be aggressive, even though there's so much demand in this industry. Still like other places, you've got to be aggressive. All right, let's see. All right, here's one. Standard big company. Exciting software focused for pharma industry bridges all areas of drug development and commercial aspects. Many locations around the globe. Yes, they are very big around the world. Um, cons. Work primarily on a regional structure, so global exposure is limited. Heavy on cost containment. Strategy for merger is still emerging. So did it say... So this is from February 13th, 2018. Not too long ago. Uh, so yeah, when companies go through mergers... Not a lot is known. It takes a while to get that hashed out. And, you know, people, employees feel the effects of that for sure. For sure. Uh, let's see. Director level. So this is good. In Raleigh, North Carolina. So this is good. Raleigh is their hub. So remaining queue people who are here to make a difference. Flexible schedules. Okay. Everyone's been talking about the flexible schedule and the ability to work from home sometimes and stuff. So that's that's apparently good. So cons, benefits and work-life balance has gone down the toilet post-merger. Lots of legacy quintiles folks jumping ship or going to competitors. Because our new CEO is a penny pincher, we no longer hire more resources like FTEs to alleviate underpaid and overworked employees. Instead, FTEs are shifted and forced to take on more with little to no reward. Pay could be more competitive. Remember that it's the people on the ground who make a company successful. We have also lost touch of the mission to treat patients. We have become a technology company whose best interests are turning a profit. There is no human in human data science. Yikes. So it sounds like, uh, it sounds like this person is saying that well, one, they are shifting their business model. As you can tell, that's why they wanted to rebrand. Uh, they don't want to just be a CRO anymore. So that's pretty clear from this. And he's absolutely right. This person's absolutely right. It's the people on the ground that make the biggest difference. They're actually doing the work. They're actually making the money. Um, so here's a juicy one. Limited room for professional growth. This is a clinical nurse educator. And worked at IQVIA for more than three years. So let's see what she says. Good way to gain industry experience. Pay is comparable to other CROs, but not a place to stay long term. In my experience, projects can and do end abruptly with severance not given. And some projects are full of demigod leaders, commercial side, who bully field workers and other limited opportunities to you based upon whether or not they like you as opposed to performance or length of employment. How many times have we seen this, guys, that it's not based on empl uh, employment history and uh, how good of a worker you've been? It's not based on performance. Almost nothing, the only thing that's based on performance is when it benefits the company, pretty much. So if they can pay you less of your annual, annual bonus because for some reason you didn't meet some metric, they will do it because it benefits them to pay you less. That's the only time it something is based on performance. But other than that, I'm telling you, networking, who you know, um, you know, you, your performance can't be straight terrible. But, you know, if you're middle of the pack slash above the pack, 
I mean, and, and you know the right people, you're in the right places. That's that's your career right there. That's that's how people move up. That's how people get get raises. It's it's not always about performance. In fact, it's it's not really about performance. So keep that in mind. Um, this person, clinical trial assistant. So I know a lot of people that were clinical trial assistants and are clinical trial assistants. Let's see, it doesn't say where, this is from 2018, no career ladder. So the people are good, the work is interesting and almost always engaged. Most of the people are on your side. The line managers listen to you. So just a, just a comment here about line managers. So some companies, some CROs have line managers where all they do is line manage. All they do is manage a bunch of, in this case, CTAs. So they don't, they're not assigned to studies or anything like that. But other companies have uh, line managers where you have, you'll have a line manager who is assigned to studies. Maybe they'll be like a clinical trial leader or something, but they'll manage, they'll have two like mentees or line managees, if you will, on the side that they'll have to manage too. So there's a couple different models here. I know Quintiles, for example, does have line managers, but that's all they do. Um, but a company like, let's say, Cineos, they have the clinical trial lead or even project managers. They will, um, they they will manage some project specialists as well. Uh, but they but they're not dedicated line managers. So just to keep in mind there, uh, there seems to be no career offer to move up. Management always spouts about upward mobility, but from the bottom line, it seems non-existent. Policy used to be you can't move up further than two job levels. However, HR is changing that. The perception in the talk is going to be much more difficult to move up. Pay isn't competitive. Other CROs are poaching CTAs and CRAs because of their competitive compensation. The new health insurance is much more expensive than it used to be. Change happens so slow. So there's a lot of things to discuss in that one. One, change happens slow. The bigger you are, the slower you tend to be. That's true in nature, and that's true in companies as well. So no surprise there. Um, ability to move up. So it's hard to know, especially at the CTA level. That's entry level, so you may not that person may not be as experienced. But guys, this is up to you. It is up to no one else but you. This falls on you. You have to know, you have to know, you have to know to move up. You have to know how to move up. You ask your line manager. If your manager doesn't know, you ask someone else. You ask another person in the position that you want. You network, you network, you network. You ask, you ask, you ask. You have to know how to do it. Um, they're not just going to give it to you. Okay? So... There is upward mobility. It's hard. It's it's not easy to move up anywhere, um, even though that there's a great demand for certain positions. And this is a position, a CTA, which goes to CRA pretty easily. Um, they they work. I mean, they work directly with the CRA and the sites, so they they should be able to move into CRA fairly easily. But CRA is very competitive. And, you know, people just aren't going to spoon feed you. You have to really go for it. You have to really want it. So act like it. They're not just going to give it to you. It's not like a assembly line or a conveyor belt. They're, it's not just going to happen. So even if you want to become a CTA level two or however they do it, you're going you're to have to ask and ask and ask and ask and really want it. So that's true at any company. All right. So I feel like we got a good sense here. Um, so a lot of people disgruntled about the uh, IMS acquisition and mergers because I know if you've been through them before, it slows things down. If you were looking to uh, perhaps change positions and then they announce a merger, everything stops pretty much in its tracks. I know that happened to me one time. Um, you just got to wait and be patient. HR gets messed up because they're com they're combining the two companies. Everything just pretty much gets messed up when a merger happens. So employees don't really like it, but the uh, the executives love it because they're getting bonuses. So just keep that in mind. Um, and that's that's one of the reasons why I feel like the industry was was slow for job opportunities in 2017. 
Uh, not like 2015, 2016, 2014. It was hot. It was very easy to get jobs. Like I said, one of my friends was a CRA said that one per, one company was giving Beats headphones just to interview. Just to interview CRAs, they were giving Beats headphones. And I've heard of uh, you know them paying for trips and things of that nature just for interviewing. So, you know, if you're not seeing that, if you're not seeing high referral bonuses, you know that the industry is, is kind of contracting a little bit. So, and we didn't see that as much as 2017. So we'll look out for that in 2018, 2019. But all right, that's it for the reviews. Let's see the uh, salaries. All right. So over here, they're going to have a lot of positions just because they're a big company that I may not be as familiar with. So I'm not, I don't know much about consultant, senior consultant. I don't know if that's a CRA consultant or some other thing or analyst, um, pharmaceutical sales rep. Um, let's see. I do see senior CRA. That's low. Senior CRAs get paid over 120. Um, that's the top. The top I've seen is about 130,000 for a senior CRA, um, but definitely not below a six figures. So that's low. Clinical trial assistant. Um, that's good. That's right on par with that position. Um, that's even higher than I've seen. I know. I mean, that might be what it is right now, but I know people that are in this position that do not get paid that currently. And this is 2018. Uh, so senior CRA is low. Director, see, I don't, I don't, I'm not so sure director of what. Um, I'm not going to comment on that, but let's see what else. CRA two, 78,000. Um, we'd like to see higher. We'd like to see in the 80s for CRA level twos. Um, so I'd say that's pretty low. Senior CTA, um, not quite not as familiar with how the CTA things this might be this might be the same thing as a CTA level two this might be the next step up from just a regular CTA um, or it might be two steps up so not not as sure there project manager you'd like to see higher than 87 if that's a project manager level one or project manager level two that's pretty good but if that's a senior level or level three that's very low again senior CRA is low and this is supposed to be a level three that's really low that's really low CRA level one that's pretty good um, typically you'd like to see in the 60 to 70 thousand but this could be they do have a training program um, so this could be uh, you know no experience very little experience which is good that's a good salary What else? CTA, it's a little bit higher than what we're used to, but it's pretty, it's good. Um, low, senior CRA two, low. Project coordinator, that's good. Uh, so if if I'm reading this correctly, this is the uh, project coordinator position. This is going to be the right hand person of the project manager. So that's good. Senior project coordinator, fifty three, that's good also. Um, so then we got some more CRAs. So, yeah, so senior project manager, that's that's good. Um, project management analyst, that's good also. That's really good. See, they ch they changed a bunch of these positions. I think this used to be the same thing as the project coordinator, but they may have changed. Uh, the role there a little bit um, so I think this is what it used to be under quintiles that was the same thing the right hand person of the project manager if that's the case that's that's a pretty good rate so I'd say you get the salaries typically big companies can pay more to people and get the best talent so let's get into interviews so difficulty is a 2.9 so average interviews um, not really seeing too many differences here with how companies are interviewing over the many of these we've done. Uh, so I'm not expecting to see anything drastically different here. Had a phone and face-to-face -face interview. Everyone at the company is very nice and there seems to be a lot of opportunity. The culture and the people make it a welcoming environment. 
The interview process is at an average level of difficulty with your typical interview behavioral questions. See, behavioral questions. Um, so application, I applied in person. I interviewed at IQVIA. Now that's actually different. I don't think we've seen that before. Somebody does not apply online, that's crazy. So they will ask you many questions regarding how you handle different situations. So behavioral, the process was very straightforward and they focus on really getting to know you based on the main five questions they ask. Very cool. Um, employee referral, process took six weeks. I interviewed at IQVIA in Seattle. It's a consultant. The position had been posted for months when I interviewed. I knew they were swamped and looking to hire someone soon. I thought the interview went well, but was surprised to learn that I didn't make it to the second round of interviews. I asked it, but didn't get much feedback. It's been a few months since I interviewed and the job is still posted. Okay, good. Um, data engineer interview. Um, easy questions, the manager seemed rushed, just blew the interview, did not feel they spent much time on my CV. Questions seemed very random, felt like they didn't really assess me thoroughly. Okay, so accepted the offer though, but negative experience, okay. Uh, so yeah guys, same thing over and over again, not really seeing anything different here. Probably the same thing, you're gonna either apply online, you're gonna get a phone call from a recruiter, uh, have a phone screen first to make sure you're a good fit, then you're going to have to go in person for the in-person interview and where they're going to ask you behavioral questions. So that's typical. Now let's get into the benefits. This is where things get good. And they've got a really good rating here. 3.8 on 249. That's good. So in general, vacation, health, 401k, benefits are good. Time off does not always coincide with the contracting company. There were days that I had to work, but the company employees had off. I wish that could have been better negotiated and coordinated in the contract. So it's February. Full coverage for myself and family. January. We have pretty good health care options to fit every kind of employee. Unfortunately, the health insurance company does not count many things as covered until you meet your deductible. We have wellness benefits, 50% reimbursement for gym membership, for example, up to $250 a year. We now have no set vacation or sick days, meaning is at your development leader's discretion. So I hope that does not mean unlimited. And I think I heard something about them going to unlimited vacation, which you guys know my stance on that by now. If you don't know, go look at my old PTO videos. Um, okay, and everyone's saying healthcare went up significantly in 2018, so. Not surprised there. We saw that in one of the view, the videos. Um, and I think every company's health went up. Um, I know mine certainly did. So health insurance went from excellent to subpar Aetna. Extremely high deductible. Uh, nothing is paid by Aetna until that extremely high deductible is met. Okay. So... Yeah, 20 days of PTO is a lot. Uh, I guess so. That's that's pretty good number of PTO days. Um, just just know that you're gonna be working with people in Europe who get five days. I mean, five weeks vacation. Um, so that that's a lot. <laughs> that's how it should be. Um, so let me got some photos here. So. Yeah, guys, it's been a it's been a good review um, so far. Acuvia, good seems good place if you want to work for a very large company. Uh, good place for you. Most of the people I know who work there have said mostly good things about it. Don't really have anything negative to say, uh, other than the fact that uh, moving up can be difficult. My response to that is moving up anywhere is difficult, especially when you're going through mergers and acquisitions so that, that's what they've been doing a lot of over the past year so not really that surprised but it really sucks when you're there working hard day in and day out and you're expecting a certain timeline to be moved up into whether it's a project manager or a senior cta or to get into the cra program so it can be kind of annoying to deal with that 
But other than that, good place to work overall. Um, and, you know, they're going to continue to probably be leaders in the space for a while until someone else innovates and catches them. So if, I'll, if any of you guys work at IQVIA, please put your comments down in the comments below what you guys think of it. I'm curious to hear your perspective, too. So as always, guys, email us at eliteclinicalgroup at gmail.com for any inquiries you may have. And that's it, guys. Thanks for listening. Take care.